Have you ever wanted a tiny PC that can handle all your daily use? Or a media PC for your TV that's also capable of running a few games? Well, look no further. Meet? Well, I don't really have a name for this one yet, but let me know in the comments what I should call it. Anyways, this case is fully 3D printed and measures only 210 by 210 by 66 millimeters, giving it a total volume of only about 2.9 liters, which is in fact just about the same size as a 1 kilogram filament spool box. Speaking of filament, this case only requires roughly 450 grams of filament to print, and believe it or not, all the parts can actually be printed on small printers like the Ender 3 or similar. Though, one thing to keep in mind if printing this on a printer that's barely big enough, if you have a magnetic bed like me, please be aware that the warping forces in the plastic may actually cause the corners of your bed to lift up like you see here. Though, this can easily be fixed by adding some small clips to the corners. But lazy as I am, I printed this on my CR10 with ears on the corners just to make sure those corners would stay down. Which I recommend doing if you have that spare room on your build plate. This case was designed in Shaper 3D and all files are available to download for free in the video description. This time I'll also include the step files so that you can easily modify the design in your preferred CAD program. I printed this case in two different colors, all black and all white. For the assembly I'll be building in the white one. This case is incredibly easy to assemble. The motherboard standoffs will thread directly into the chassis with some downward force. Now, a lot of you guys requested the use of threaded brass inserts instead of tapping directly into the plastic, so here you go. These four M3 inserts will later secure the rear panel and IO shield in place. Before we can do that, we need to prepare and install our motherboard. The one I'll be using in this build is an older ITX motherboard. It's a B450i with an AM4 socket, accompanied by a Ryzen 7 5700G which has some of the best onboard graphics you can get right now without a dedicated graphics card, which I'll get into more details about at the end of the video. For cooling we're using a Noctua L9A, which is basically the AM4 version of the L9i that you've seen me use in some of my other videos. We're also using 16GB of DDR4 RAM. The boot drive in this build is a 250GB M.2 SSD. And we also have another 1TB M.2 for general storage mounted on the back of the motherboard. Simple as that, we're ready to install it into our chassis onto our four pre-installed standoffs. Next, we can add our 12mm power button. The case was designed specifically so that the excess cables could be tucked away here in the front of the case. Now, you may wonder, this case is so small, where will you put the power supply? So, I did some testing and figured out the best way is to place the fan facing down towards the CPU cooler, making sure they cancel each other out so that the temperature stays super low. It's kind of like noise cancelling in headphones, if one fan cancels the other at the right speed, they will completely cancel the heat. Alright, enough joking. I'll actually be using this 250 watt Pico PSU. It's got an 8-pin CPU power connector, power for a hard drive and a 4-pin peripheral connector. What's so cool about these power supplies is that they actually plug directly into the motherboard, taking up pretty much no space at all inside the case. This sounds really great and all, but there's a downside. It requires an external power brick instead. And the one I've got here is a 12 volt, 20 amp, 240 watt power brick, which should be able to deliver more than enough power for this build. I'll be linking to the exact one I'm using in the video description. Now let's plug in our CPU power and tuck away all the cables that we won't be using. The power connector also needs to be mounted to the rear panel before the rear panel can be secured in place. This case has been designed with easy assembling in mind, so the top cover will actually just slide directly into the main chassis, meaning the rear panel is what keeps everything locked in place. We can now install our IO shield and attach the rear with 4 M3 by 10mm screws and we're done. I'm so happy with how this thing ended up looking, fits perfectly into a minimalistic setup and is perfect for people who want pretty good performance in a discreet small build for daily use and some light gaming. I really like how the light bounces off the external pattern on the case, and the design works great as an on-desk setup or as a media PC connected to your TV for when you want to play some games when your friends come over. Speaking of friends, let's look at some performance data. 
What really surprised me was how well this thing actually played considering there is no external GPU. So I first tried launching Fortnite at 1440p high settings and we're looking at about only 25 to 30 FPS on average and I even experienced some choppy framing stuffs. But when scaling it down to 1080p at medium settings the game ran like a dream. Still plenty of detail and a stunning 80 to 90 FPS steady all over the map which felt super smooth and was very enjoyable. Even with an average temperature of 89 degrees, the game still ran super smooth. Moving over to Modern Warfare Multiplayer. Playing at 1080p low settings, we're looking at about 25 FPS on average, which is really not good and it felt very choppy. Scaling down to 720p low settings, I got about 35 to 40 FPS on average, which was playable but not the best. Call of Duty also seemed to run a little cooler than Fortnite. In Warzone Resurgence at 720p low settings I got about the same 35 to 40 fps on average. Here also playable but not great. When jumping into the big map on Warzone we're looking at about 30 fps at 720p low settings. Even though the numbers aren't great it's still pretty impressive how much performance we're getting from just onboard graphics. And you must think at almost 90 degrees celsius. This thing must sound like a jet engine right? Well, I'll let you decide. To me, it sounds kinda like a PS4. And you know what the craziest part of this is? Even after hours playing at 85 to 90 degrees, the plastic has not melted. It's still whole. How? This thing is printed in PETG which has a much higher temperature resistance than PLA, which is commonly used in 3D printing. For a tiny build with poor airflow like this one, I would not recommend using PLA. Even though I did say in another video that PLA was ok for PC cases, but that was under the condition that there was actually a continuous airflow, which this case simply does not have. A design like this will simply recirculate the hot air exhausted from itself so the temperature will stay a lot higher than if the air was pushed through and out the other side. Overall, even with the high temperatures taken into consideration, I'd still call this build a success. I'm so happy with how it looks and performs, and clearly the CPU can handle the heat. All parts used in this video will be linked in the video description. 3D files, including step files, are available to download for free through the printables link. If you enjoyed this build, feel free to leave a like or subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again in my next video.